Approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a coat that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a coat tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the coat? They told them that Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks on him, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the, in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches come along the way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Peace be with the church.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Merciful grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who would declare me guilty? Uh, please turn in the bulletin to Psalm 31, and we'll recite Psalm 31, 9 to 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me they fought to take my life. I have trusted to you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who prosper. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. A reading from the book of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that he is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. We'll be reading the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. And we have several people that volunteered to uh, do some of the roles if I could ask them to come up front. Also, the congregation, if you'll uh, look back in your bulletin, you'll see where there's a, a, a place for the congregation to speak as well. So pay attention to that. Um, and for everybody else, when you hear the word Golgotha, that's a sign for you to stand up. You can remain seated until then, but stand at the word Golgotha. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes in their whole council. They found Jesus, led him away, and handed, handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, And if you no answer, see how many charges are being against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. And at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone who they asked him. And a man called Barabbas was in prison with the brothers who had committed murder during an insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to this custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? We realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd and had them release the rabbits for them instead. So Pilate spoke to them again. And what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas with them. And after having Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed them in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, he is the Jews! They struck his head with a reed and spat at him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on and they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Serena, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called God, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing his clothes among them, casting lots to the side where he should take it. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with them was crucified, were crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by to ride with him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, uh -huh. you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of the Jews, come down from the cross now, so that we may seek and believe. Those who were crucified with him also pointed. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out loud in a loud voice, Be Lord, be Lord, lay up, son of man. Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. 
And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see where the Elijah will come down and take him there. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his legs. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in, saw that in this, he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them, Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and Joseph and Salome. They used to follow him and provide him for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When the evening had come, and since it was the day of the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly into Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And some of them in the centurion, and he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph caught a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Thank you. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Each year on Palm Sunday, I'm tempted to skip the sermon because the Gospel really says all that we need to know. And to break it up and preach on only one small part of it would do it and us of this service. In its totality, it is the essence of what we believe and why we are Christians. So today, I've chosen to say a few words about Paul's letter to the Philippians, which sheds some light on why Jesus' story is so important to each of us. Recently, I read this story about an American, a Lutheran, who was vacationing in a small village in uh, Denmark several years ago. On Sunday, he attended services in an ancient village church, which dated back almost a thousand years. And he went early so that he could see everything and experience it. Though he didn't understand the language, the service was understandable to him and its outline and its actions, the flow of the service, the standing, the kneeling, were all consistent with his church back home, except for one thing. At the beginning of the service, everyone came into the church, came up the aisle, and stopped about halfway, and turned to their right and bowed to a blank wall. When the choir came in, they did the same thing. When the pastor came in, he did the same thing. Curious. After the service, this visitor, this American, stood outside and talked to a few people who could understand English. And eventually he asked the question, why did you stop and bow at a blank wall? And they all said, we don't know. We've always done that. So he asked the pastor, and who said, I don't know. They were doing that when I got here, and I saw no reason to stop them. And the pastor did promise that if he could find out, he would send him a letter. Several months later, this American received a letter from the Danish pastor. When the church was built around the year 1150 AD, there had been a mural of the Madonna and child painted on that particular spot on the wall. It was a Catholic church in those days. And during the Reformation, it switched to a Lutheran. And the mural had been painted over, and the people were instructed to stop by to the wall. 
Hmm. Good luck with that. <laughs> the people of the church ignored minister after minister after minister, telling them to stop bowing to the wall until the clergy finally gave up. And eventually, the people and the pastors all bowed to the wall. And after several hundred years, they all forgot why they were doing it. But they continued to do it. In many ways, we as modern Christians are a lot like the good people of this Danish village. The image of the real Jesus has been obscured over time and with cultural changes and shifts and reinterpretations of the Bible. Over the years, we've been told Jesus is this and Jesus is that and that Jesus is another thing until the real Jesus is sometimes hard to see and sometimes hard to know. And yet, we still come. We still worship. We still bow in front of that which we barely understand sometimes. This is the miracle of faith. Sometimes we're not sure who this Jesus really is, but there's something, something about his life, his teaching, his witness, his death, his promise of eternal life that keeps drawing us back, back to that wall of worship, back to the place where we bow and we pray and we hope and we look hard to see God in our lives. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, just prior to the reading today, Paul encourages the Philippians by saying, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. Then Paul reaffirms the call that Jesus made from the cross to follow him by saying, let the same mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. That's what Holy Week is all about. With Holy Week beginning today, it is a time to look for Jesus, to look for Jesus in the scriptures, to look for Jesus in the events of the last week of his life, to look and see what he is all about. It's time to look for Jesus in prayer, to meditate about his call to follow him, to pray with him, to pray with him the upper room prayer for love and unity among all God's people. It's a time to look for Jesus in worship, to join this community on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, leading to Easter, to receive again his command that we love one another, to witness once again his death upon the cross. Most of all, Holy Week is the time to look for Jesus in our own lives. To see the real Jesus, Luther said we must look to the cross, for there Jesus died for us. There Jesus revealed God and what God is really like. To discover the God who suffered and died for a sinful but beloved humanity. There on the cross, Christ calls us to follow, calls us to take up our cross and serve and suffer for the world, calls us to treat God's love now and forever. I'd like to close with our opening column for today. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, 
In your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Frank, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find Him and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Mary, Pat, Loring, Camilla, Madge, Anne, Charles, Kara, Hannah, Virginia, Reed, Nyla, Jack, Joanne, Sylvia, David, Theora, Kay, Jane, and Buddy. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Monday, Thursday at 6 o'clock on Thursday evening. Um, at the end of that service, we'll be stripping the altar and preparing it for Good Friday. We will not be doing foot washing this year due to the COVID situation. Um, we'll have a service on Good Friday. We will be serving Eucharist from the reserve sacrament at that service. And then we'll have a short service at noon on uh, Saturday. And after that, uh, that we're preparing the church for Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday, um, we originally planned to have three services, and we asked everybody to make reservations. Thank all of you that have made reservations, but we added a fourth service because all of the services filled up except the eight o'clock service. So we're having an eight o'clock, a nine o'clock, a 10 o'clock, and 11.30. There'll be an Easter egg hunt between the 10 o'clock and the 11.30 service. So if you have children or grandchildren and you'd like them to participate in that, come to either the 10 o'clock or the 11.30. My understanding is that both of those may already be booked, but you can check with Penny to see if anybody cancels and you're able to get in. But I do thank you for making reservations. It makes it a little easier for us to plan. 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Father, in your infinite love, you made us to yourself. And when we had fallen 
and the sin become subject to evil and death. You and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffer and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father. In this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior has taught us, we are welcome to say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us see the peace. Almighty and living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Gifts of God to the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.